แพ้อัลโลว้าซัมมันก็เบรรี่เลย What's going on Because today <laughs> army episode ah huh? we are mm. in theme Because tomorrow is army day Yeah I think it's SAF day is it? Okay. SAF, SAF, yeah. okay. SAF. Whole yeah. SAF You have to wear yes. three berries <laughs> <laughs> So today we want to give a homage to all the men and women who are serving the nation and we're going oh. to bring you some great stories from the army so Uh, But before the story, must have song, correct, right? Correct, correct. So, what song you got for us? I'm going to give you a classic army wow, song. Classic, yeah. Okay. Mm. So many. Which one? This is my favorite. Okay, okay, okay. I match. I match. Yeah. I match. <clears throat> Training to be soldiers, fight for our land. Ones in our lives, two years of our time. Have you ever wondered? <laughs> Why we must serve? Because we love our land and we want it to be free, to be free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I didn't wear berry. Ah, you... I got my snow berry. Snow berry. You see the tree there? You go kiss the tree and come back. <laughs> I think if I kiss the tree, I don't come back, sir. Go go hunt too, ah, hunt to cover your eyes. <laughs> you see the lady in white? Ah, uh, kiss, go go and kiss and come back. Wow. <laughs> you know, been, hello. We've been waiting to do this army segment for so long, and today yeah. I think it's perfect timing because, 明天是 
S A F Day. Correct. So to everyone out there who is currently serving or has already served or is yet to serve, which is basically everyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> everyone and their wife, girlfriend, mother. Okay. <laughs> Happy S A F Day. Woo. Uh, I know I was looking wow. at the uh, chat group earlier on. Everyone's in mm. the uh, in a army mode, and it's so wonderful to to see the chat. <laughs> I, you know, I feel the Friday Night Live show has a f- couple of parts. There's the mm. pre-show, there's the <laughs> the show, and then there's a post-show discussion. Okay, can I say the pre-show is getting longer and longer and longer? <laughs> okay, because by Eight plus some people were already in there. Very stressed. Okay, today's number one was Maureen. Yeah, uh, she got back our number one spot. Yeah, she's our super super number one. Okay, so thank you for being there. The moment I open my computer, it's like, eh, Maureen. Elsation yeah. at number six. <laughs> yeah, yo, no hope, no hope, lah. <laughs> Stop trying already. <laughs> Stop trying already. Okay, we got lots of regulars, I know, but we also got a lot of newcomers. Mm. So if it's the first time here, please let us know. Say hi, so we can give you a shout out. And if you're from overseas, also please let us know because I'm not sure how many of our, our army army references and army lingo yeah. <laughs> might need explaining. Yeah. So yeah. If there are words that you don't understand or, or concepts you don't understand, feel free to ask the group because everyone is here together. That's right. They're gonna, they're gonna help you figure it out. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. Someone was from New Zealand, but New Zealand. the chat came. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, it's no, it's Minang Marantau. Oh, wow. Yes, wow. Sally from New Zealand. Hello. I think of Minang. Hello. I think of food. Man. I think of food. I'm hungry. I need, <laughs> I need to see parang. <laughs> So yeah, let us know if it's your first time or if you're from overseas. Mm. Ajita is dialing in from Shepparton in Australia. Mm. <laughs> Actually, Australia is very close to our army, right? Because like... Yeah, like we, we go there we, for training. We, uh, Wallaby. We, we play the most, right? It's either that or it's Temburong. So anyone from Brunei. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Say hi if there's anyone. From, anyone from camp. Is anyone listening in oh. in camp? That will be so exciting. Yeah. Uh, so please, yeah, give us a shout. Or if you're on in camp now, oh no, right, poor thing. Now 10 o'clock already. I think no more training. They're probably back at bang. <laughs> yeah, or if you're in Tekong now, even better. Wow, you're going to tell you stories about Tekong. Okay, so tonight, you all hopefully get nightmares. <laughs> la. <laughs> Wait. Never mind, you can still hear me. My camera is a bit faulty. Oh no. Okay, yeah. I think Mindef is trying to censor you because you wear the beret. Yeah. I might take it up. I might, I might take it yeah. up later. Like someone say, my beret is a bit too tight. <laughs> we oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yes, because it's full of cobwebs and uh, moths. Correct? <laughs> uh, Navina is asking what unit was I from? I was from... Come, share, share. Uh, God, I can't remember all my unit number. Already, but uh, I was... Because <laughs> they kept throwing you around. Yeah, it? so I was <laughs> typical uh, BMTC. Uh, mm-hmm. I was in Camp 2. Then, uh-huh. uh, from Camp 2, I went on to CISPAC. Uh, and mm-hmm. then, after that, I was in... Uh, where was I? Some uh, guards unit. Then, I broke my leg. <laughs> then, I went to uh. School of Logistics. Then, was School of Logistics. Oh. I went to guards again. And then, I served uh, six high-key, four low-key. Never missed out a single one. And that's where I met Stephen Lim. <laughs> That's the end of your army journey. <laughs> it ends with Stephen Lim. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you some funny stuff about him. Uh, he's a hilarious <laughs> guy. And uh, quite a genuine follower too. Yeah. <laughs> I think, okay, because I'm much older, mm. <laughs> so when I was in in Tekong, mm. there wasn't even a Camp 2. Or rather, Camp 2 was not for training. So I, there was only Camp 1, Camp 3. So I was in Camp 3. I was in Camp 3. And then after that, I was sent to Signals, Stagmon Camp. Oh. And there is going to be a Stagmon Camp story. I'm very excited later. Mm. And then I, uh, oh, of course, so I didn't I didn't make Signal Sergeant. Oh. So I lobo at Stagmon Camp. The other thing that Stagmon is famous for is being a lobo camp. So I loboed for practically like six months. I did nothing. Shake leg only. Wow. Six then months? I, I got... upgrade again? Uh? Huh? Downgrade six uh, no, months? No, uh? no, no. No. Downgraded, stayed there six months, and then after that, got posted to a clerical task. Oh. And finally, I became a chief clerk at Beach Road Camp. Oh. And that's 2PDF. And then I continued my reservist with 2PDF. So mm. even now, I'm a volunteer reservist under 2PDF, which is now in uh, Clementi. So long journeys, yeah, long journey. I, I downgraded <laughs> for about six months, but the club lost uh. my docket, so I was there for one year. Nice. And uh, that, that camp was where I was from, a school of logistics in Salita, mm. haunted uh. as fuck. 
but it's torn wow. down now. But I will tell you a story about uh, Selita. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a lot of stories, are guys. So I think uh, today's special, you notice the mm. timing is not the 10 to 11.30 anymore. It's 10 to 12 with the potential of 12.15. So let's, let's see. It's when never it ending. Today is never ending, okay? And if it doesn't finish, we will continue <laughs> part three, okay? Yeah. In, oh, someone's asking, oh, okay, Lee Thomas is asking, was I, was I from Hawk Company School 2? No, no, I wasn't. I was from Gryphon. I don't know if Gryphon still exists. But yes, I was from Gryphon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow, so much to cover. Okay, but before that, we have our house, housekeeping, uh, housekeeping. Wait, uh, I want okay. to say hi to Elle's husband because she's putting us on big screen. Hi, Elle's husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel honored. Okay, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to like loom closer just for you. Okay, yeah. like, ooh. <laughs> okay, so what happens if the chat is going by really fast and you have a question that is burning in your soul and you want to get it out or you have a comment that you want to share? How right. do you help? us to catch okay so catch catch your comment so today we don't have a guest with us so john and i will be talking a lot and it's only going to be natural if we don't read your comments so don't take it too mm. hard but if you have something to share something great uh, or a question that you really want us to answer click on a dollar sign below it's called a super chat function and mm. what you post will come out in a big bright box and we cannot miss it uh, yeah. But you can also use that function if you you know you enjoy the discussion today and you're feeling a bit mm. generous, uh, you know, don't buy us a, a drink, like a coffee, click that dollar mm. sign as well, put in any amount you want, like $50 or $100 or mm. even as low as $5. Uh, yep. But Anything you donate will not go to SAF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but our beer is not $1. La. Beer, fine. <laughs> but I would uh, encourage you if you have not yet uh, heard about us and you, hey, you know, mm. you want to get in on the action, you can join mm. the rest of our patrons yeah. at patreon.com slash Supernatural Confessions. I'd like to welcome two, sorry, three new patrons Ooh. we have this week. Uh, <laughs> uh, coming from Sentient Entities, our number one spot from the dawn of time, Chua Elaine, Alsatian Adrian, yeah. Chua M. Green, yeah. ZP Matt, in Germany, uh, Queen Lai, Saravanan, mm. Lim Te Chuan, uh, Achilles Aries. Remember last week, uh, he, he appeared mm. on the comment section quite a bit. Uh, he's also quite lauchia with us, actually, but he haven't yeah. heard Friday Night Live for a long while. Elwin mm. Sensei. If that nice. name is familiar to you, <laughs> that's because Elvin is also a confessor. He survived the Sentosa Wax Museum encounter. <laughs> on the ring spirits, we have Karina J. Joel Go. Uh, Deborah Cornfield, J. K. To, V. L. Linda Hayden, Ely X, and a new name in this uh in this this Jesslyn Ann, mm. Restless Low, Rest Restless Soul, Restless <laughs> Souls, Su Chieto, Grace Chai, Candy Cha, Chia, Ron, Jack Ong, Kenny Polaris. So if you want to join us <laughs> as a patron, www.patreon.com slash supernatural confessions. Yeah. Can I just say I found but I found a buddy. I found a buddy. Someone was in Tekong Camp 3 Gryphon a year before me. <gasps> wow. We and could have I, met. Oh, we could have met. He said I also <laughs> king out because he's saying that you king, no. I did not gang lah, Mark Shippo. <laughs> I still got knee problem there. Okay. And I made up for it by serving way past my liability. Okay. Uh-huh. I don't know how old it is. Still volunteer as army. Okay. So I'm making up for it. Mm. <laughs> but he also ended up in Beach Road. Mm. with me so uh, Mark Shippo was clearly stalking me through the army <laughs> <laughs> I will deal with you later <laughs> uh, Vince Lee saying all BMTC no mono here anybody mono uh, raise your hand oh, mono is a whole other lifestyle yeah okay oh. <laughs> wow so army ghost stories what is it about them that gets everyone so excited mm. why uh? Eugene tell us Okay. Why Why the fascination with army ghost stories? I think, first of all, Singaporeans, mm. Asians love our ghost story. You go to school, mm. you will have, every school will have a haunted toilet. You go to school camp, mm. every school camp will have ghosts. And so you just progress all the way up to army camp. And the ah. thing is, you know when you're in army, right? So we are all very used to cautionary tales. We grew mm. up with cautionary tales from our parents' era. So hearing things like, don't do this, don't do that. And mm. I... I and even when I met new recruits, because I'm out of the force for many years, 20 years. So the latest mm. urban legend is when you are going on a Jacob ladder, no matter the time of the day, you never mm. look down. Because you will see a pochong 
if you look down. <laughs> so I can imagine, uh, you know, a sergeant out there uh, say, hey, Tan, don't look down or you'll fall down. <laughs> sergeant, I don't dare, I don't dare. You look down somewhere, you see Pochong. Oh, sergeant, okay, okay, I don't look down. Yeah, we see why that urban legend exists. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot look down, man. If you won't you fall, won't you trip? If you look down or don't look if, down. If you don't look down. No, even my time also when you're doing uh SOC, you are yeah. taught to look in front because you look down, you were, you were, you you trust your body, you trust your steps as opposed to right. using your eyes to gauge. And in that speed, right. you might just yeah. fall. Ah, mm. okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, they should just put one pochong under every obstacle. <laughs> right, just just to make this so on the other side of the low wall, you know, you know. You know? <laughs> Actually, that is the old story that I used to know. What? What? Right, that in somewhere in Tekong, um, not camp, not camp three, but camp one, uh, old camp one. Uh, right, uh, they say that if you run the SOC uh, backwards at night, uh, it was a challenge. Eh? It was a dare. Okay, you run it backwards, so you run, you you jump the low wall from the other side. Mm. You will see an old man on the other side scolding you. So uh, when you say run backward, you mean like literally? That means you start from the last obstacle ah. and you do the reverse. So when you hit when you hit hit the low wall, you're gonna jump from the other side, and the old man will be there to score you. Okay. The spirit of SOC. I tried it. <laughs> I tried it. I run backwards. I run from the ah, then because that's part ah. of uh, my graduate BMT graduation. Um, Hazing. Uh, no, no. We we, we all <laughs> had to volunteer, right? So ah, okay, okay. And back then I was I was then. But fit. was this was, was it the Kong? No lah, this Tukong. not. Was this the Kong? The Kong came to whiskey Tukong. company. So. Ah, then do you see I, anyone? Uh, no, no old man. Ah, last no lah, old man was my time lah. By that time, he's too old, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but also must be at night. Must be at night because it was a dare for guards at night. Wow. Okay lah. Yeah, people be. on duty. Yeah. So can I say extra lah? La, recruit. You know lah. The old man needs to sleep lah. Okay. <laughs> the old man needs to sleep. Okay. Achilles okay. Aries is asking the top three wow. haunted camps. Oh, tough top one. Top three haunted camps, please lah. Wow. Oh, that one I need okay. to pull you guys already, man. <laughs> yeah, I think let's do that as a poll because I think everyone has different opinions. I would definitely say my camp, Bishrop camp, is one of the top, right? Mark Shippo will agree with me. <laughs> okay. I would say whole of Selita camp. I'll consider Selita camp uh, uh, the whole uh, compound is uh, hunted. That's because it's so bloody ulu that mm. there are more hantu than people. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not surprising. Okay. Um, but of course, Tekong, Tekong, of course, right? Is the Kong counted as one camp or must must, must course, compete between the oh, the camp by camp by camp? Yo, like that, then you got different <laughs> camp one, camp two, camp three, camp four. But right now, according wow. to the, the 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 new recruits, camp uh, four is the dirtiest. Oh, is it? Uh, ah, okay, I, okay. I need to put my 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 finger on the pulse of what the current recruits are talking. <laughs> not our time, you know. <laughs> we passe already. So I want to know what the current recruits in Takong are talking. And camp four, like, if you talk about. Ah oh, yeah, my camera mm. go off again. So if you talk about um, a, a, what do you call it? The guard duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you can do the ferry terminal guard duty. You mm. can do ammo down. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot more you can do. Yeah. Camp four is where people avoid going. Oh, okay. Because I'm so old, right? I do not know the current layout of the Kong. Right? Where is camp four in relation to what used to be camp one and camp three? Does anyone know? Okay. Because that will help a little bit, right? In terms of orientating. Eh? Because in my day, right by the water was Camp 1, right? And there was no ferry terminal. It was mm. just, you know, a, a, a cement slope <laughs> and then the camp really, mm. you know? And then you march all the way in and it's Camp 3, right? So now, I, I don't know what's going on. Was so your Camp 3 do the tell me. 3 door bang? Was that the Charlie 3 door uh, bang? No, Camp 1 is the Charlie 3 door bang. And also the 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 the, the lady on the uh, on the Jacob's ladder and many many other tales mm. are Camp One, Camp One. Then Camp Three is the haunted parade square, and also the path to the jungle where all the various various things happen. Uh, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> camp Three is Rocky Hill. I think uh, back in my Rocky time, Rocky Hill. Rocky Hill oh. was a suspect uh, camp. That was Camp Three. So I'm not sure. Right, right. You know the story I uh, told camp- you about. Camp Tree is really near to the uh to to, to the, the the jungle training ground. Mm, mm. Yeah, we go up the slope and you're literally there already. Yeah. The field the field training. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. Tekong is gonna be a hot spot tonight. Okay. So many of our stories. Oh, are. Rocky is Camp 4, no wonder. Oh, so, oh, oh, did Camp 3 become Camp 4? I think so. Ah is Camp okay, is Camp 4 rather old? 
because then it yes. is definitely because my camp lah. The camp four they say, uh, based uh. on the description, is a very longish uh. bunk. Yep, that's my camp then. Mm. Yo, okay, no wonder then camp four has inherited all the hantu. Okay, mm. even I have hantu stories from camp four. Ooh, mm. Okay, mm. now I understand. So what is camp one, two, three then? Is it all in one compound? Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, camp, my time camp one and camp two is mm-hmm. it shares the same compound. They're just divided because um they mm-hmm. just need to have like categories lah. And right, camp two okay. is nearer to the ferry terminal. Camp one is ah. the other side. Okay, okay, okay. Youngsters like you have fairy terminal all. Huh? Oh. <laughs> In my day, run run through the jungle. No jogging track one, you know. Okay, last time got no, no track one. No right? tunnel bring you, bring huh? you out? No, no, as in when you, when you uh, to, to exercise, you got no sports complex, no track, nothing one. Hey, how old are you, John? I'm ancient. I'm so ancient. You have no idea. Okay, I'm like 10 years old like that. Okay? I, I, <laughs> hey guys, I know John for so many years. I honestly never asked him how old he was until today. You will never know. Uh, uh, yours is the, the, the Tamasic Green one, right? Yours is the Tamasic Green one. <laughs> Why is it the Tamasic Green John? Yeah, I, I was trained by the Israelis. Can you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, okay. So, so, so Eugene's theory is that number one, everyone loves all Singapore stories mm. and after school tropes, the mm. next automatic trope will be the army, mm. right? Mm. I have another theory which is that army is such a terrifying experience mm. for anyone coming into it, mm. right? That you need something to distract you, mm. you know? And having something even more frightening that isn't a real sort of uh, source of, of, of stress, you know? Because you can't really go and stress about the Pontiana and stress about the thing. You, but you can stress about fitness and being punished and everything else, right? So having these little stories that focus your stress mm. make the rest of your long army days and nights a little easier to cope. That's why we love them. Yeah. You know, because they distract us. Mm. Unless that stress becomes real for you, then you sway. Ah, <laughs> then you super sway. But tonight, la, tonight we have some confessions about people who are very stressed over their encounters. Ah, uh, okay. Well, okay. Anna May is trying to guess my age. No, Anna May, you are wrong. 56. Okay. Uh. 56 <laughs> okay, nah, I think can. Uh. I'm a vampire. Uh, someone said it. Someone got it right. <laughs> wow. Okay. So come, let's talk about urban legends, man. Okay. So uh, before we talk about urban legends, shall we read out some urban mm. legends? Yeah. And then, yeah. and then we will we we'll use that to springboard to. Yes. Okay. Lie, lie, lie. Ready, John? Mm. And take Come. it away. Urban yeah. Army Yo. Urban Legends Confessions by or rather submitted by KK Hing. The Old Granny and the Child. There's a popular rumor of the ghost of an old granny with her grandchild walking the grounds of BMTC in Tekong. According to legend, this old granny and the child will point out whoever is still awake after lights out. Being modern, most of us understood that this was just a cautionary tale told by our sergeants to scare us into sleeping after lights out. But there was one incident that happened to a buddy of mine that made us rethink that there could be some truth to the tale. I was in hot company and we stayed on level 6 of the barracks. My buddy had a high fever and he was given a 10C bang status meaning he could rest in his bunk instead of the medical centre, but it wasn't serious enough to release him from camp. It was in the evening, right after sundown. The company was downstairs at the company line cleaning our rifles. My buddy was the only one in the bunk resting. In his half-conscious state, he was awoken by a hunchbacked granny who spoke to him in Hokkien, asking him why was he the only one in the room. Still a bit groggy from sleeping the whole day, he replied in his limited Hokkien that he was sick and that the others must be outfield or at the parade square. The old granny nodded and walked away. It was only a few minutes later that he realized what had just transpired. He jolted awake and found out he was alone in the bunk. The sun had set fully and the room was in total darkness. The only light source came from the fluorescent ceiling lamps along the corridor. Could she be the ghost that people claimed to witness previously? <gasps> it was well known that the basic military training centre, BMTC, was built atop a Muslim cemetery in Tekong. And consumption of pork was not allowed anywhere else other than the cookhouse. This incident happened to a recruit from the company beside ours. 
The recruit was also given Pest C bunk status. His buddy, looking out for him, brought back food from the cookhouse for him. It didn't occur to the buddy that there was pork on the menu that day. So nicely, he tapau a packet of dinner up to the bunk. That night, while in the midst of slumber, this particular recruit was woken up by three green faces peering through his mosquito net. He brushed it off as his imagination. After that incident, it seemed like bad luck followed him throughout camp. A few days later, during tra- training, he felt like he was being pushed and hurt himself so badly that he had to drop out of course. Was this punishment for consuming pork on campgrounds? Hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is, these are all very familiar very to me. Classic. So let's talk about the old lady and the kid. Mm. Okay, when I was in army, okay, I was told the f- even freakier version of it. Okay, mm. this is the one that I I was told back in the day. Mm. Okay, mm. it's different, right? She was not. She was looking for the ones who were not sleep, right? So, this guy was sleeping, and he suddenly woke up, right? And he caught. I think he heard something, right? He looked towards the end of the bunk, yeah. and he saw her moving, mm. right, with the sun. Okay, or I don't know, son or what lah. Okay, with the boy. Mm. Okay, and they were look stopping at each bed, and looking, looking at the person sleeping. Okay, these were the old bunks, single decker only. Right, so otherwise you cannot see the top bunk. So single decker only. Mm. Okay, so they were moving bed to bed, bed to bed, bed to bed, and he thought, oh shit, I better sleep, I better sleep, I better sleep. Something's not good. Okay, so he lay there and he shut his eyes and he just tried not to move. Mm. Right, try not to move. Okay, eventually after a very long time. He thought, okay, maybe it's safe. So he opened his eyes and he heard a little boy's voice saying, Ama, chika hai mein ho sui. Yeah. I, <laughs> fact, you know, from, from your time, right? It also passed down to my time. We also heard the same, exact same version mm, of that. The chika so hai mein sui. Wow, I tell you, super shock, super shock. And my friend's version that he heard from a different camp was that there was something that will Tickle your leg, tickle your leg, tickle your leg. Mm. But then when you op- open your eyes, you cannot see anything because it's the little boy. Mm. So he, you cannot see him. Uh. He's the one tickling your leg, trying to wake you up. <laughs> so what the hell is going yeah. on? I don't know. You know, anyone have any theories what this old lady was was in charge of? You know, was she actually someone hired by Mindef? We say she's a ghost, right? Maybe she wasn't. Nobody says she's transparent or no legs, right? Maybe she really was a ama hired by <laughs> Mindef. Yeah. Speaking of that, right, I want to share a, mm. a very short confession uh, I've got from Daniel. Uh, who's Daniel? Uh, one of the confessors. <laughs> one of the confessors. So okay. he, he was doing uh, guard duty in, mm. in camp. And you know, in some of those guard duty camp area is you are sitting inside a... Like a, like a con- guard room? A, la. It's a container. Guard yeah. room is a container. Oh, container. Yeah. Okay. And you have that film... A, a, a sort of very dark film on the window to prevent sun from coming in. So okay, okay. you cannot see outside, you cannot see inside. And this particular uh. camp is famous for having things and putting outside things and knocking mm. on your door and on your window. Then you open up, there was nothing. Then there will be nothing. Ayyoh. So about 4 a.m., right? He heard knocks, mm. knocking sound on his window. Okay. He say, okay, lah, I think this one is the Pontiana. I just ignore. But mm. usually when they ignore, you'll go away. But the knocking mm. persisted mm. with even greater urgency. Mm. So he said, okay, I, he got up and he go to the window. So he see total darkness. He had to go mm. very close to the window in order mm. to see what's outside. Because it's 4 a.m., ah. right? So ah. he walked up to the window. He just looked through. He don't want to go out. Like, because going out of the guard room is just even scarier. So he looked ah. at the window. It's ah. an old woman face that like, come right up the window looking oh. at the pranjat he think I think he oh. beat his pants he <laughs> fell backwards and then the knocks the knocking happened again then she uh. atia, atia, kwe manga, kwe manga. then he opened up the window he realized it's the cleaner yeah la, that's why she does an old auntie that's why. So maybe that's the legendary cleaner who has now become, and she doesn't know, right? Because she doesn't listen to this type of show, right? So she has no idea that everyone's talking about her. You know, she's our very own Long Po of the army. You know, maybe because 
you know, everyone in the company line sleeping, right? Yeah. Then like duty officer also want to sleep, right? Mm. So they just ask, hey, auntie, ha, ni, ni sumpian sao ti de so, ha, pang wa kan sui hai mi o sui. Since you're cleaning, please check out who's not sleeping and mm. report to me. Yeah. <laughs> then she like, she very serious. She's very serious. Mm. She's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please let us know if you know anything else about that auntie, all right? Uh, her name, her, her telephone number. But also, if, if, you, if you have any other theories about uh. why she does this, or is it just a reason to stop us from uh, staying awake, lah, yeah. right? You know? But okay, uh, let's talk about the, 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 the pork in the okay. bunk. Yeah. So the pork have in you the... heard about that yes. before? Yes. Even me. my time, mm. we were told by the sergeants not to bring pork in the bunk. But, why? Uh, okay, so again, uh, tr- quite true. Uh, BMTC was built on Muslim cemetery, so bringing pork would offend uh, the spirits. But here's the other mm. thing: I don't mm. recall ever mm. even the cook mm. house having pork. Huh? They never serve pork, not in my my recollection. Got lah, got lah. Yours ah, okay lah, maybe. No lah, I'm sure. I mean, there there must be a reason, right? There must be a reason why it is halal, non halal, right? I but think. even my not halal only have chicken, 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 chicken. Is it? Oh, oh no. Chicken okay. fish, chicken fish. I, I know for sure that the canteen had pork because we always buy bihun with the luncheon meat. Oh, right. Yeah, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. in those days okay. it was not the it's not the fake luncheon. <laughs> not the <laughs> fake luncheon meat, right? So yeah. But okay, this is the thing, right? Uh I was I, I was country, right? And I think I think Camp 3 is the origin of this story. Okay. This whole because I was actually we we lah okay on the first day of 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 enlistment we were warned by our platoon sergeant about this, right? People at Camp One were not given the warning, only the ones at Camp Three were given the warning, mm. and it was very specific. It is not about bringing pork back to the bunk. It is about bringing pork across the parade square. Oh, specifically, Different. not the bunk because I have eaten tap to toa bak pao and char siu pao in the bunk. I'm fine. But you cannot walk across the parade square mm. with your pork because the parade square was the cemetery. Very okay. specific. So another version I got is not the parade mm. square was a cemetery, but a uh, parade square uh, were where they put ah. bodies on stretchers. So I oh. guess it's, a, it's the version of a cemetery, like, but dead like bodies a morgue, there, like a morgue. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but mm. to to yeah. debunk that urban legend, <laughs> ah. uh, my group have one guy. Uh, who brought in? Eh, actually, uh, my group Chun Yo Hock is my BMT mate. He's also a fan of the uh, SC. Ooh, whether Chun Yo Hock okay. is is on show today. Um, mm. he brought in Bakwa. Yeah, someone just said also someone someone in the chat just said proudly proudly some more. Huh? <laughs> you brought Bakwa back to bang. Yeah. No lah, it's not the bang that's the problem. But you, if you cut across the parade square with the bang, ah, uh, uh, with the pork, then it's a different story. Okay, so I uh, think so. If you guys are listening in, uh, so not say we want to say lah, but you no, know, if you <laughs> do it and let us know whether it works for you, <laughs> or not, you can. Uh, <laughs> this is for Camp Four, uh, okay? If you are Camp Four, okay, not every parade square in Singapore, okay? But no, 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 okay. I have, I have, uh, I have supporting evidence, okay? I have supporting evidence. This is a new one. I don't think I told you this before, you Okay. So when we were in Camp Three, uh. right? Uh, I think during our first week, right? Uh. One particular night, we were all woken up because there was dogs barking, right? Uh. There's always wild dogs uh, around uh. Camp Tree. So the barking was super near and super loud. Okay, we were on the third floor, mm. okay? And it didn't stop for a really long time. So we all started getting curious and a little bit pissed off. So we went out into the corridor mm. and we looked down, okay? And this is what we saw. It was freaky, okay? In the middle of the parade square, all the dogs were sitting in a circle. Sitting, ah, and they were just barking at the middle of the circle. Barking, barking, barking non-stop. Okay, non-stop. I've never seen dogs bark like that without running. Usually, you know, they're chasing or something. They were just sitting there and barking. Okay. And we were all like wondering what the hell is going on. Mm. And then suddenly, imagine, ah, that whole circle stood up, continued barking, and they followed. They walked. They walked across the parade square, okay? Still barking at something in the middle. That's when we all ran back into the bunk. Maybe yeah, that's and a we never came out. K9 unit, uh, you know. <laughs> training, <laughs> uh, night training. <laughs> so I don't know, okay? I'd like to imagine that we witnessed something. Yeah. Something moving across the parade square, okay? And the dogs were protecting us. Okay, I'm not sure, okay? But that confirmed our no pork in the parade square theory, mm. okay? John, ah, John. See? Yeah. Uh, Sergeant KK uh. say we all have to sign Sarek Etra. Oh, okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> so next Extra seven, is good. Next Extra seven, you can see ghosts. <laughs> next seven Fridays, cannot take break. Uh. Must do Friday night. Uh. <laughs> uh, oh. Wow. 
Okay, uh, Hanjir is saying Salita camp. So we are still trying to get the polls for the most haunted army camp. Uh. I think, wow, it's tough mm. on this one. Okay. <laughs> so. Wow, hey, hey, there's proof that my stories are old, okay? Uh, Anna May says that my NCO told us the story that John is sharing when I was with Hawk Company in Camp 3 in 87. Wow. Yay. These stories last. I'm so glad. Seven. Yeah, I 87. Got, you're, eh. you, then you're in your 50s already. Lah. No, lah, and that's not my story. That's Anna May. Lah. Oh, okay. Anna May say one. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Stop trying to guess my age. Never going to happen. Okay. <laughs> That cat is already dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Wow, Speaking okay. of uh, a haunted uh, camps, I would say mm. actually mm. Stagmon Camp does list as one of the highest based on the people I spoke to. In the minute you go, oh, which camp are you from? Stagmon. Stagmon! Ah! <laughs> Ah, empty line haunted, toilet haunted, company line haunted, <laughs> area haunted. <laughs> I have to be convinced because I was there for so long and nothing ever haunted me. Yeah, you... <laughs> but that's because it was the happiest time of my life because I was Lobo. Ma. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Lobo means, uh, oh no, left out of battalion order, L-O-B-O, -O, okay, which means that there's no place for you among the, the, the soldiers who have work to do and wars to fight. So you sit one corner and see if anyone needs to like dig the soil to plant uh, CO's orchids uh, then you come and dig <laughs> you know that kind of thing so we were we were, we just sat there there was a whole room full of us okay? we were called a Lobo company because basically everyone who was Lobo for an extended, extended period of time will be sent to us and we will sit there in the room like a whorehouse okay? <laughs> and just waiting for customers you know and then people will come and say like three of you follow me six of you follow me uh, I just oh, yeah. need two I'm like wow shi uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know it's, it's yeah, very yeah. fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so that was my life okay for a while okay. Yeah, but come tell me, tell yeah. me, uh, tell me a, a stack mon okay. story. Also, before that, I want to thank Patrina Lim for uh, her, her, her donation as well, and Frankie. That can be arranged. Uh, make the donation for our night snacks. Ooh, hey, your mastin, come down. Uh, your your <laughs> spring roll. night snack. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so this one is um. called Forbidden Sixth Floor of Stackmon Camp, fashioned mm. by Justin Chua. This incident took place when I was a trainee in Stagmon Camp back in 2012. Life was a joy there with our main experience being strenuous technical training, delicious cookhouse food and canteen snacks. I was bragging about a good life there to several friends who have enlisted before me. And one of them actually mentioned that the accommodation block that us trainees are living in is dirty. It sparked my curiosity. On one of the Sunday nights before my official booking timing, I googled about the camp's haunted history. The stories online and circle around the sixth floor of the accommodation block and how we are to beware and keep out. Several versions also mention about a particular bunk on the sixth floor with talisman pasted on its door and with it secured with chain and a lock. You can call me Ichi Backside. As on one of the nights where we have some rest time, I gathered some of my platoon mates and told them what I read online. We then decided to head up to level 6 just for some thrill. We didn't encounter anything, so we went back to our bunk to sleep. However, it was after that curious exploration that some of us started to hear dragging footsteps nightly, walking along our hallway into the bunks, past our beds, disappearing into a thin air. It affected me so badly that I resorted to sleeping with earplugs on. I also had recurring dreams of a Chinese wayang painted face glaring angrily at me. I just assumed it was my overactive imagination and had nothing to do with the supernatural. Until a bunkmate told me about his dream and it was the same vision as mine. What are the odds? There was also a night where the trainees were woken up with a piercing scream directly outside our window. We live on the third floor. We just exclaimed, Olawe! And did our best to ignore it and go to sleep. I went to speak with my sergeants, telling them that I'm suffering from a lack of sleep due to these nightly disturbances and obviously, there was nothing they could do. Their only advice was, just go and sleep. There are all these things all around us. 
But Jess go and sleep lah. Apart from the footsteps, the eerie dream and the scream, there is this metal gate to level 2 where the officer cadets are housed. That level is not always occupied, especially when a current batch of officer cadet trainees have moved out after clearing their training. The heavy metal gate tends to slam several times a day. Their occurrences only happen the sunset. I would think that these occurrences were happening from my very first day in the camp, but perhaps having learned about them online and from a friend made me more conscious about their happenings. Mm. I'm trying too hard to remember which which floor we're talking about. I think, I mean, the bang block is actually quite tall. I do remember that. I do remember different floors were used by different people. Uh, I think I was on the fourth floor at, uh, while I was training. I don't remember if there was a sixth floor. <gasps> Scully, there's no sixth floor. Dang, dang, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Taemon Camp hasn't changed much, right? I don't think they renovated or anything. So, mm. Mm. I don't know. There's another I don't know. camp that I've been to personally and I've seen the metal gate locks and everything. Ah. Oh. This one is at Slita. Uh, it's, the... it, it's that kind of like the shop grill kind of met that no, metal no, no, gate, no, right? No. They, they, oh, not it's, that. Uh. It's basically a normal building with stairs up to the other floor and they build a metal gate just to block people from going up to the last floor. This one was, uh, I think, the... Uh, what do you call it? The chemical chemical warfare uh, block. John, what happened to you? I cannot hear you. Hello, hello. John, you need to reset. I can't hear you. UG. Yeah, yeah, can hear you. Ah, can you hear me? Can, can hear you. Can hear me? Okay. Wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think someone ate pork just now. Okay. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, I'm changing. Hey, your... I can't see you though. Yeah, I, my my camera is. Uh, I need to change my camera. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> I got to change your microphone back again. So I'm making a request. Okay, I'm waiting. Yes, okay, so I just sent a request. Uh, hasn't come up yet. Never come up. No, they have not received. Are they? Okay. All right. Okay, now you're good. My camera is gone out, but I'll try to fix it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, can you guys hear me and see me and hear Eugene? And you just gonna sort Let out us the know. camera. Eugene uh, is sure. currently. But I think you get the audio should okay, be working. Eugene fine. is currently topless, so <laughs> yeah. Let us know if you can see us, uh, at least if you can hear us both. Okay, we'll do an ASMR episode. Okay, all right. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think Mindev is yeah. listening. Where were we? Yeah. Yeah, Mindev is listening. Uh, no, no. It's okay, so we were talking about uh, the gate, the metal gate, the metal gate. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yes. The metal gate. Yeah. 
So it's it's not the kind of like accordion gate that you see in no, front no, of shop no, houses. No, no, this is, is like quite 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 hardcore. One. Okay, okay. Why is uh, there a metal gate there? I I don't know. Uh, so there according <laughs> to some people who were from that camp, but again, uh, it's hearsay like hearsay. Uh. Yeah. Uh, the the, the mm, top mm, mm. the top bang the top uh after six uh, o'clock people don't go there level yeah the level people don't go there so mm. um, of course we just give people instruction not to go there it doesn't really work so they build a gate to, mm. that's even yeah, worse lock people out oh okay okay so it's a it's a protection ah telling people not to go there is the only way to guarantee that they will go there hmm. I remember doing guard duty at Stagmont and we prowled and we prowled and we prowled and I don't remember coming across anything but that's because we never went near the bunks. Lah. So maybe that's where the focus is, right? You know. So anyone out there who knows anything more specific about the top floor, the sixth floor bunk, please let us know. Very exciting. Okay. Wow. Is there anyone out there who's like fresh from NS? Huh? You know, maybe if you've been to Stagmont camp recently so we can get updates. <laughs> Wow, okay, okay. Hey, what, what, nice what's, on the, what's on the comment section? Huh? Um, they say that you are abducted by alien. They say you never pie pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Na uh, Navi Network says what I said, which is uh, SAF is watching and they're trying to censor us. Mm. Actually, I got news that the government agencies are really watching us. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Oh, no. Okay, which government agency? Uh, they, didn't, they didn't say. Uh, they didn't say. <laughs> okay, Navi Network is saying he's not from SAF, which means he is. La. He's okay. not from SAF. Then where is he from? Police. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we must do another episode with police stories. Okay, that'll be another Didn't episode. Didn't we do, okay. do the police stories like last week? Is it? No, no. Uh, uh, police NS stories. Oh, okay, okay. Mm, so, I, 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 got, I, got, I got friends who are in police now. So, I, I should ask him to start collecting. <gasps> Okay, Ronald Wong said, I entered to the top floor of Stagmon once. There were just metal cupboards. Ooh, that's kind of spooky or so. <laughs> okay. Okay, RSVP by Grace is requesting for firemen. Okay, I cannot I cannot promise. That one I cannot promise. <laughs> that one she wants the firemen, uh, is it the, the topless firemen the kind of? The sexy calendar. Yeah, sexy calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we see Eugene a little bit. Uh -huh. Oh, there, there, there. Okay, oh, welcome. Okay. But no 4K, guys. <laughs> and ATP. Ah, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh, okay, thank you, Chua Elaine. A contribution Woo! for a new camera. Woo! Thank you so much, Elaine. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Wow. Demonic Slayer, you just you just made my night. Headless Fireman. Wow. Wow. Elsa, just say why Eugene so small. That's how rumors start now. That's how rumors start. <laughs> eh, your berry is still on your head. You want to get censored yeah. by it. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Come. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, all these all these sexy army role play stuff, huh? Uh, don't share, don't share in the live, huh? Okay, all that. <laughs> Keep it behind closed doors. <laughs> wow, step one cam. Mm. Okay. I miss that cam. I, I do miss that cam. Those were those were good days. Those were good days. <laughs> okay, now we are back. Then I when I went, when I ended up in Beach Road Camp, mm, awesome. that's where I discovered scary things. So my time in Stepmon Camp was peaceful. Beach Road Camp was the one. Tell, tell us your story. Because so, oh, you, so many stories, I tell you. My unit was haunted. The other brigade was haunted. In fact, we, while I was there, right, mm -hmm. the, you know, we were also in a sort of a container, container type of thing, right? Because, mm. you know, uh, I see I have no money to build proper building, right? So uh, after we were there about six months or uh. something, we got kicked out of that container. Ah. Uh. Okay, but like very suddenly, right? The camp, the camp just said, okay, you, you know, you have to move to another office, okay, which was a bloody nuisance. And we asked why, what are you gonna do with the container? They said, oh, we need to make a map room, a uh, top secret. So no, okay. la, la, la. so we do, right? We moved, mm. and then they just sealed the room and never used it again. I'm like, uh -huh. that was a very bad lie. And it's yeah. So for the longest time, it was there. Right now, that spot, that that that, that spot where that container was, uh -huh. is right underneath the driveway of the hotel, the hotel at South Beach, mm, mm. right opposite Sun Tech. So you as you, as you park your car there, maybe you can feel something. Okay, yeah. but that that was super haunted. Even the prowlers who went by felt it. I saw something. My 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 chief clerk saw something. Everyone saw something. Okay, but. I will tell those stories gradually over time. You know, you know, your confession just sounded like the cab driver in Mlecker. 
Ah, ah. Oh, that place haunted lah. That place got, got ghost lah. Ghost What's the story, Uncle? Keras lah, keras. 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 <laughs> no story. Okay, okay. Because too many lah. Yeah, too many. Yeah. Beach Road Camp is one full episode, okay, with okay. Mark Shippo as a special guest I, because he was there yeah, with you. <laughs> I, I think, you know? you know, one day it'll be like, um, today's theme, Jonathan's story. <laughs> the whole one and a half of his Jonathan's story. <laughs> okay. Especially because mm. part of the camp is already gone, mm. right? So it's very fascinating because those haunted spots mm. are now part of your your F and B, part of your the rest of your buildings. So uh huh uh huh, I wonder what happened, <laughs> you know? Mm. So lots of speculation in that one. Mm. Okay, <laughs> what unit is Beach Road Camp? Uh, Beach Road Camp was the headquarters of the Second People's Defense Force mm. back then, but they moved already. They moved, right? Yeah. You know, you talk about this PDF and all that, having all these weird things, right? I know my our mm. next confessor, um, his name is Bernard. Mm. And he's a very short mm. confession. Uh, but he accounted something weird. But what's really interesting is, he didn't know it was weird until he listened to Supernatural Confessions years after that and go, oh, such thing can happen. Uh. All right, this is Bernard's listen, confession. Listen. Have a lesson. It's a few recruit, uh, how recruit that time. Uh, as we are on an island in Pula Tekong. And the com is all, uh, always where everything happens. Okay, then I do guard duty. Uh, then I get, I get prowler, where I can just uh, walk around the uh, designated route in pairs. Uh. Uh, I think somewhere we were prowling uh, after that, uh, we reached near my company line was. I told my buddy to wait for me at a designated spot. Uh. I went up to go and take. Forgot what it was. Uh. It could be either cigarette or handphone, but. I think I might have said cigarettes, but it's so long ago, I wouldn't remember anyway. <laughs> I just went up to take it out. Uh, and then when I came down, I didn't see him there. And then I cannot comps because I'll get into trouble. I'm not supposed to split. So, searching, searching high and low. And then all of a sudden, I, like this pack of dogs, I forgot how many were there. This pack of dogs, they just come running after me. I don't know why. I wouldn't run from dogs, but then it's just like so many dogs. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> So I just run, run, run. I, I don't know, I run out like what feels like five minutes and then after that I see the guard come and my buddy right in front of me. He said I he said I went up company line and I didn't come down. So you walk into another dimension. Which I think is possible because but it did not occur to me at that point of time because I wasn't thinking of <laughs> this kind of thing. Time warp or whatever thing. It's only like later in life and then I think about my Thing and I thought maybe that could be a case until after I uh, see uh, supernatural conventions that I oh there's such a thing mm, yeah so many <laughs> lives have been ruined by supernatural confessions <laughs> no lah many eyes have been opened yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we brought Broaden your horizons what, here, John, okay? Mm. Wow. Mm. Was, it, was it a time warp? Mm. Did he slip into so, a gap in the matrix? Yeah, so just to, to uh, recap what uh, Bernard has said, he was mm. doing prowling. BMTC, mm. yeah? Prowling. And then he walked past his camp, uh, his, his company, and he said, hey, I'm going to mm. go up, take, he can't remember whether it's cigarettes or handphone, right? That's a, that's a very bad prowler. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pro halfway go and take things. Okay. But you're on. not supposed to do that. You're supposed to always yes, be in you, pair. Call, uh, okay, yes. Right? So he went up, he came down, he did not see his uh, buddy. Okay. But he saw a pack of wild dogs and the wild dogs was running up, was dashing towards Chasing. him. Right? Okay. So he says, usually he would not run when he see the dogs because most of us know there are dogs in camp. But these mm. were the dogs that running at him. Chung, mm. right? So, right. you see dogs running at you, you run, uh, you run. So, what he did mm. was he ran around the company. <laughs> and then when he, <laughs> he ran one around, he came back, he saw his friend. Where, where he was. Supposed to be. Yeah. And then turn around, uh. no more dogs. And when they exchanged uh, intel, like, hey, where were you? Where mm. were you? He's like, I didn't see you. You went out. I waited here. You didn't come down. What about the dogs? There were no dogs. What dogs? Nice. So what did Bernard see? So Bernard was like, oh, well, uh, maybe it's weird, but never think too much about it lah until years later. Wow, I love this. I love these Twilight Zone moments. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it reminds me of one of one of my favorite Yin Yang Lu episodes. Okay. <laughs> I think like Yin, Yin Yang Lu 4 or something, there was a story like that. Wow. Ah. Different. Same spot, different time. Mm. Wow. Mm. So shocked, so shocked. So I okay. was thinking, did the dogs mm. chase after him 
Or did the uh. dog notice that there was a ghost covering his eyes, sitting on his shoulder covering his eyes? And, and the dogs were chasing, were chasing the ghosts. The ghosts. Yeah, but they were not normal dogs. Yeah. Because the friend couldn't see them. Oh, so they oh. were Tian Go, eh? heavenly oh. dogs. Or was the friend actually a spirit that took the form of multiple dogs? Well, that, <laughs> and that, that, that one's a bit far-fetched. playing a trick on That's you. a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You never know, you never know. Okay. Yeah. Uh what some people are asking. So okay, uh Beach Road Camp, is it near St. John Ambulance? Uh no, 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 no. It is directly opposite um Raffles Purvis Hotel. Street and, and Raffles Hotel. Mm. Yeah, next to what used to be the NCO club, right? Which is still standing there. Mm. Okay, now it is South Beach Development. Okay, and mm. I uh, the name of the hotel which stands on where my haunted office used to be. Is the JW Marriott? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Ooh, show, show, show. Many, many, seriously, many stories. If I start telling now, we will not get to any of our other confessions. Sure. So, <laughs> so slowly, slowly. Okay. okay? Um, the, the 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 keras will come bit by bit. Keras. <laughs> bit, by bit. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about the next confession? This one is about someone taking a smoke break and then mm. seeing something and then decided maybe smoking is bad for health. This one is one of my favorites because it stars one of my favorite hantu in the world. Uh, confession <laughs> by Saiful Bari. Take it away, John. Wait, hold on. I must open the thing first. My story happened in 2009, two weeks before the fasting month, at Tekong, of course. Where else? I was fresh out of CISPEC, assigned to do the TFT guard duty, Tekong Ferry Terminal, a rite of passage for all new specs posted there. Like all guard rooms, there were monitors for the CCTVs installed around the complex. Among them was this one CCTV facing the old jetty. It wasn't even late at night, when my senior spotted something. Then he called me to confirm what he saw. I came over to take a look. We saw a very, very pochong light being at the jetty, just hopping about. I said pochong light being because it was just a blurry figure. Then my senior did the unthinkable. He pulled seniority and asked me to go outside to check the thing out. I said, no, of course. I didn't care if he was going to charge me for insubordination. So we decided to ignore it. Two hours into the incident, I wanted to go for a smoke break. Oop, hold on. I took a glance at the monitors to see if the pochong light thing was still there or not. It was no longer there at the old jetty. Instead, it was now hopping in front of the CCTV monitoring the car park which is right beside the smoking area. Needless to say, as smart readers and educated Singaporeans, that smoke break never happened. <laughs> Actually, that's quite smart. Huh? You can track the movement by CCTV. Oh. Yeah. I also think if I'm the sergeant, huh? oh, yeah. uh. I smoke, huh? smoke someone, am I? You know, I put a pochong there. <laughs> <laughs> so it was actually one of the other guards. Lah. <laughs> no, lah. Or, or, or it's mm. just a pochong that is doing guard duty. Uh, uh. Okay. Can but, you imagine that pochong doing guard duty? Then the pochong will go back and tell the pochong guard commander, hey, I saw a human. Leh. A, a human was smoking there. But lucky he never see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, so, this story uh, reminds me of a story I, I have shared before many years ago. Uh, I think this was during the generation one of Friday Night Live. Wow, but, that's the old days. Yeah, okay. Since there's a lot of new uh, audience, I will retell that story. Uh, mm. I think people like Navin Net and all that, they will probably ha have heard it before. Okay? So this is uh, Amit, Amit, Amit Ammo Dump at Takong. Okay. I was, we were, we were the batch that moved from Pasir Laba, Sispec, to Takong Sispec. Mm. Okay? So, um, I'm Ammo Dump, got duty. I remember the Ammo Dump was painted pink in colour, not green, as the usual army colour would be. So, okay. first thing I asked, why, why pink? Mm. Uh, right? Then, a lot of, all these stories come out, oh, because there's a Pontiana around the area, so to placate the Pontiana, we painted the walls pink, which is plausible, because to paint an army 
building pink in the middle of forest is quite strange. <laughs> okay, so I, <laughs> and we were in the guard room and in the aircon room, and we we'll do the prowling, but we'll stop and we will look at CCTV lah. So mm. on the CCTV, I saw a pochong. Mm. Okay. okay, now when we say pochong, immediately it comes to mind all the Indonesian show where. It's really a wrapped up person. You can see very clearly definition, the crease in the cloth, the shadow. Mm. What I saw was like a, on a CCTV, lah, right? The size was uh. like Ika, Ika Bilis, right? Uh, and it was, just, sure. do, it was okay. just doing this. It was just wiggling okay. around, wiggling around. <laughs> and in all honesty, it did not look like the scary pochong we mm. had envisioned in horror movies. Of so, course. But it does look weird. And Teleported from here, it choop, choop, right? Wow. So, we thought, okay, la, maybe is it like insect or whatever? So, we call a sergeant. La. Because, uh. army boys, right? Uh. We, we want to believe in Hantu, right? Because <laughs> the place already got <laughs> reputation. So, call yeah, the yeah. Battle, or, uh, battle Order Sergeant or Company Orderly Sergeant. Hey, eh, Sergeant, mm. Sergeant, Sergeant. Got Hantu, got Hantu. Tengok, pochong. <laughs> right? So, so excited, happy. excited. <laughs> right? Hey, go and check it out. Huh? <laughs> Sergeant, my la. Go and check it out. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, lah, Bopian, right? So, take mm. rifle, but my rifle, my buddy and I, we walk down. Ah, mm. And radio back. Sergeant, nothing. Ah, nobody. Yeah. Hey, go in front some more. Sergeant, really got nothing. Hey, go in front some more. Sergeant, cannot see anything. Don't have. Hey, mm. go to the gate. I go to the gate. Sergeant, nothing. And a fucker behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come back, come back, come back, come back. So we went back. I said, what happened? Then he pointed to the CCTV, the one with the gate, right? He said, uh-huh. apparently, I was standing there and the pochong was standing uh-huh. right in front of me. Behind, and he was laughing. Behind the gate. So he kept asking me to go in front, go in front, go in front. <laughs> so I was literally, my, my, my face was at the gate and the pochong mm. was on the other side. So you can imagine, I can literally put uh-huh. my hand out and touch the pochong. That's how close it was. And mm. uh, so, because it was an abnormally in the recording, we had to report. Uh, that night right. itself, about a few hours later, uh, mm. uh, I think, would it be... Okay, I'm not sure which department. The, the, it doesn't matter anymore, but I think it's... In my in my memory, it's like uh, the police one. Uh, the, ah, okay, the, okay. The, the investigation branch. Uh. So, uh. they took it and they brought it back and we never see that footage ever again. So, oh, years later, okay. I was telling people this story and they said, oh, mm. this guy was from Gombak. Uh, actually, Gombak got a X-Files division that handles <laughs> all this CCTV footage and investigation. Gombak knows <laughs> there are strange things happening. We just don't, don't tell you guys only. I think this X-Files division is just one inch with a lighter and a trash can. Okay? Everything that the footage come to him, it burned and, and then, eh, gone. Now, <laughs> what's interesting is, as how most of these stories became the seed for urban legends, mm. right? Mm. And years later, after I finished Army everything, and I mm. bump into some people, when I'm doing this horror thing and talking about tours and everything, and mm. not on multiple occasions, I heard about, eh, you know, uh, the M.O. Dam uh, got this story, you know, this soldier uh, saw the pochong and he went there. The sergeant took on him, make him go out and see the pochong. <laughs> wow, I tell you, then this soldier uh, oh, unlocked the gate, go in. Oh. Then he saw the 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 the, the, the book out, check in, check out book. Uh, got a, a signature of a, a soldier who checked out ammunition <gasps> and a signature of a dead person. Oh. <laughs> what the what? It sounds like my story, <laughs> but really it has evolved. Then the next time I heard from somebody again, Oh, so there was the soldier who went up to the gate to see the pochong. He saw the book, was signing sign out. Then he got possessed by the dead soldier. Wow, <laughs> that elevated another level. Somewhere <laughs> along the way, I think I died, you know. <laughs> In some of the retelling, I still I cannot possess until die. So, yeah, la, that's that's how stories flow in. <laughs> in but army. something that they left out of the story is that when you check the sign inside out book, the name written there is P O Chong. Ah. <laughs> Yo Chong. Ah, you never know. First of all, there is no signing sign up book at the MO Dam. <laughs> and I don't have the key to open the gate to the going to the MO Dam. So that's not possible. <laughs> okay, okay. Since you're talking about guard duty, okay, yeah. I tell you I, I tell you the 
guard story, guard duty story that I was told. Okay. okay. This was very, very early in my time at Bishop Camp. Okay. Okay. So I clearly I was one of the noobs and I was doing sentry. Mm. So for some stupid reason, the guard commander decided this story must tell everyone. So he gathered everyone into us this story. Mm. So okay. Uh if if you okay, like, I cannot say if you remember. Like, Mark Shippo, if you remember, okay. Um the it was an old style British camp. Okay. Mm. So uh all the important buildings are on the beach road side. Okay. Mm. And the H, H the H, HQ was facing Beach Road. Mm. Okay. At the end of the HQ was the guard duty block. All right. So that's all that's all you need to know. Everything else behind is insignificant. Okay. This stretch is very important. And there's a driveway in front of the HQ block that passes by the guard po- the guard duty post. Okay. So apparently this happened um, probably about a decade before I came in. Right. So what happened was on a certain night, right, uh, normal guard duty. Okay. And then the DO, right, the duty officer, right, did a turnout. Right. So everyone came up. Mm. Okay. Everyone came up, everyone assembled in front of the guard duty post. Mm. Okay. So he he count, 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 give them some, you know, pointers, mm. whatever, whatever, told them to be vigilant, blah, blah, blah. And then he dismissed everyone. Mm. Okay, and then he walked back towards the DO room, the duty officer room, which mm. is inside the HQ block upstairs, got mm. aircon one. Okay, so he was walking along that driveway in front of the HQ block, mm. right? And walking, walking, walking towards. Now, in the middle of the HQ block, there's a big sort of uh, uh, where the cars can turn in. Mm. Okay, that kind of old school building, you know, where the car can actually turn mm. into the building, come out the other side on. Mm. Right, so it was a little driveway. So he was heading towards that. That that was the middle, and the mm. staircase would go up to the office from there. He's walking towards it, and he noticed another person, just a shadowy figure first in the distance, walking towards him. And he was very surprised because everyone in camp should have been at the guard duty post. Mm. He had just dismissed them. There should not be anyone else in camp and in the other side of the building, right? So he kept walking, right? He didn't say anything because he was maybe uh, suspecting something. So he, he kept walking. And as the person came into the light, he saw the person was wearing Japanese officer's uniform. Mm. Straight away, his mind went into hyperdrive. Mm. Okay? His first thought was, I must protect the other soldiers. Whatever the hell this is, they must not encounter it. Mm. Number two, I need to protect myself. Mm. Right? But he couldn't run. Because if he turn and run, he will lead the, the thing towards the guard post. So how? Nowhere to go. Okay? On the other side of him was the fence and then beach road. But he couldn't climb the fence. Mm. Right? So, he took a risk. He said to himself, I think without speeding up, I will reach the middle part first before he does. So I might be able to turn and then disappear. Okay? Before he catches me. So that's what he did. Right, very bravely, he just kept walking. The figure got closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And then, as they were both approaching the gap in the building, before he turned, he suddenly had an instinct. He stopped and he saluted. Hmm. The figure stopped, saluted back. Hmm. And then he just turned and he didn't run. He didn't run. He just walked. And then, as he reached the stairs, ah, then he started running. Okay, he ran into the old room, he picked up the phone, he called the guard house and said, everybody who was there, gather them inside the guard house now, stay inside, don't come out. Okay, and look out. Look out for anyone walk, walking past. And then he stayed on the phone with them for more than half an hour. Nobody walked past. Hmm. This camp. So Beach Road Camp was used as uh, British Intelligence before the war and then the Japanese used it of course so who knows you know to answer um, Achilles Aries question again I'm still mm. trying I'm still thinking about the question of top three most haunted uh, <laughs> army camps I would say that Beach Road Camp mm. would for me be the most underrated haunted place because clearly uh, that from, no, uh, from what you're telling that is very haunted mm. but I have not heard of Beach Road haunting before prior mm. to, to conversations with you Interesting because, okay, logically, it's one of the oldest camps. Mm. None of, ma- not many of our Singapore camps were used by the British, mm. right? And dated to before the war, mm. right? So it is a very old camp. It was also, I think, uh, very significant both to the British and to the Japanese, mm. right? Because of its location, mm. right? Okay. 
uh, why no one talks about it is because it's a very small camp. So mm. not many people were there. Mm. There's no training at that camp. Mm. There's no training. All clerks one. <laughs> all clerks. All yeah. Pessy, Pessy and below. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very, I mean, you think about it, South Beach development is tiny. Mm. Mm. Right? So yeah, there were not many people there. It was just Mark Shippo and me only. So um, because of that, I think the stories don't get out. Mm. Right? The places that give us the most stories are the training places. Stagmon, because it signals training, sees a lot of uh, uh, soldiers pass through. What's the one with the tanker, the tank on? Which one? Which one? The tank? The, the one, tank the west one? side one, the, the where the tank, the tankies go there to train. Gedong. Gedong. Yeah. Someone, oh, there were many mentions so. of Gedong, Gedong earlier. Yeah. 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 yeah so, definitely. I mean, but then again, you know, these places where there are more, more hantu than humans, because mm, Hulu, right? Mm. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm totally not surprised. And, uh, wow. The, the, the next con- confession that we have is about an NCC haunting. I want to share with you an NCC story before we go into that confession. Were you in were you in NCC? Yes, I was in NCC. Um, <laughs> I was in Scouts. And then I went when I went to secondary school, the very first uniform group I joined was NCC. Loyang Secondary. Ah. Um, ah. And I, I kind of... Okay, so there is a mm. reason why I joined NCC. Okay. Because in my class, Sec mm. 1... Uh, mm. There's this girl called Xiao Ting and her best friend called Li Hui who would always look at army boys and go, Oh, I'm so leh! I'm so <laughs> So, yeah, I had a hot for one of them and I decided that, you know, I'm going to wear uniform too so I can be I'm so <laughs> So I joined NCC lah. Uh. And in sec 1, 10 years old, I was this very scrawny mm. boy. I had my growth spurt at sec 2 to sec 3. So, over mm. the course of one year, I... I grow, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so back then, I was this oversized <laughs> <laughs> uniform <laughs> and I finished my sec, I had NCC all the way from sec 1 to sec 4 mm-hmm. and then I decided to extend my my tour of duty mm. into, what do you call it? The officer cadet course. Ah. All right, right. Yeah. Right? Those, Something those, like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, where you are now in, not in secondary school anymore, but you can come back and be the mm. officer and, uh, for... Mm, you have a one one bar and one white line. Mm, mm. So I, I went to Maju Camp. I can't remember the camp. It's probably Maju or okay. the one near Ishunon. Either one. Right. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. Nis, either Nisun or Maju. And mm. again, long bang, window at the end, mm. then double keda, double keda all, all the way. Like, mm. like it's almost like like a tomb. Right? So I was <laughs> on top. Uh I was on top bang sleeping. Mm. First night uh, of of uh, training, then I feel mm. my double decker bed start to shake like that. Oh. the best way I can describe it is as if someone is having sex below. You know that kind of momentum to do to do to do to do. Mm. And I know it's not my imagination because my double decker metal bed was hitting the wall to to do to do to do. Oh. So first thing I thought, Ula underneath my my body pachuching is it? So I look down and I see him with mm. a blanket up and he also shaking. shaking. Okay. Then next mm. thing I do is I look in front. Uh, look mm. in front of me. Room was total mm. darkness and you only get this light that seeps in from the corridor light. So mm. you get a bit of lighting. So first mm. thing I noticed was a pair of hands on both sides mm. of the, the double-decker bed. Mm. Then I noticed the hands led to two arms in smart four, a uh, uh, long four. Mm. Then, arms to shoulder, shoulder mm. to neck. Mm. And when I look at where the head was supposed to be, because when you look at someone, first thing you do is look at their face. So that, Correct. Right? But when I tried to find the face, I saw through uh. the straight line shoulder uh. to the other guy on the other bed across. There was no head. Oh. Jang, jang, jang. And the thing was just, duk, 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 duk. Wow. So what happened? What did you do? Take my blanket. Go up, <laughs> pretend to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I started praying, started praying, started praying. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, and then that was it. That was it. That was the only incident I have in either Nisun slash Maju camp. That one mm. night. So mm. because this sort of hunting is so so fleeting, mm. you really start to question, was it my imagination? Maybe I didn't mm. sleep enough. It, it was anything but the hantu. But I remember that incident till today. Mm. And when I ask people... It's always... Yeah. Uh, 
It's always tricky when you wake up to a haunting. Mm. Right? Because you don't know. You don't know, right? A second ago, you were not awake. Mm. So there's no way to verify mm. whether it was a super, super vivid dream mm. or whether you had actually experienced it, right? Correct. Correct. So, you know? what are so those... even after all this time, are you, you're, you're not sure? I'm be sure. Okay, because now we do so much dissection of confession. Mm. What are some mm. of the possible things, John? I was in my semi-sleep mode. I mm. made all that up in my head. Mm. Because if there was a real haunting, it should be recurring. There was no recurring. There was no yeah. marks. There was no evidence. So it's and easy. Clearly, there was no follow-up even, right? Nothing. Clearly, it left you alone. So what's the purpose of waking up? Is there a reason? Is there a mm. logic behind it? That don't have no. one? So yeah. hard to pinpoint whether it's, it's horror or not. But the mm. fact that I still remember the hand, mm. the headless portion, and how mm. frightened I felt. It, it, I mean, I'm just going to go with it was a hantu. Lah. <laughs> Nonsense. <you know. laughs> but there's a lot. There's a whole history of uh, bed shaking and cupboard shaking, right? Mm. These are the two things in every bunk that shake a lot, mm. right? So, of course, bed shaking could be many, many reasons. Mm. Uh, okay? But <laughs> the locker shaking is the one that scares me. So there was also a Tekong story about a locker shaking, uh. right? And I, I don't remember the details of it because it was some it was told to me like half drunk. Uh. But what was striking about it was, was it would shake regularly, apparently, right? So everyone in the bank was sort of used to it. They just tried to ignore it because it never led and led to anything. Mm. Right? So when they hear it, they just turn turn their face away and they sleep, lah, you know, and, and they say don't care. But one night, he I don't know, like curiosity got the better of him, right? And so he instead of turning away, he looked at the locker that was supposed to be shaking and he is the only person who has ever seen the thing. And it was a skinny figure mm. in black, like all black. And it was hanging on the locker. Like, you know, like, like you grip the top of the locker, then your body is hanging on it and it's just rocking it at the end. A little bit like what, you, what was happening with your bed. So I don't know what the pattern is and what they're trying to do, but that was creepy. Ah. Uh. Fazli is saying, so, I think Nisun came underratedly. Multiple cases of suicide and there's a Chinese opera song playing at the ADF mm. house every night. Nisun Kem was also, uh, was it not a BMT camp also? Before yes. everything time was, was gathered at Tekong? Your time. No, la, that, that was before my time. Eh, no, 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 correct, correct, correct. I had, yes, my time got, got training, got training. La, at, the at the 1950s. La. Yeah. Mm, shut up. Okay, yes, and yes, there were many, there were many suicide cases there. That's true. Okay, but I know something interesting. Hmm. I don't think we'll talk about it today because that will take the whole episode. But I think that the very first jumping bed, shaking bed story is actually linked to the three door bunk story. Wow, that one. Mm, and I know how they are linked. Because why? The person I interviewed was there. Hey, so you cannot tell us like that, then you don't tell us now. <laughs> Grass, you know. Hey. Okay, now moving on. Hey. Where, 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 where's the raw guy? <laughs> Carlos, Carlos Cole. Carlos Cole. Cannot raw. Bro, I mean, yeah. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Oh, <laughs> okay, come, come, come. Okay, so this one is mm. NCC Horror Story Confession by Adif Pranav. Mm. Okay, you go first. Oh, wait. Huh? Let me... <laughs> I, I, I need to... His name... Typo, typo. Adif Pranav. I'm going to take this one, guys. Mm. Adif, if you're listening, because I know you are, this one is for you and your brother. This was way back in 2016. Me and my fellow ex-co went for our SSLC camp, that Senior Specialist Leaders Camp. And uh, it is a three-day, two-night camp where we learn various skills such as teaching, leading training programs, becoming a leader, physical training, drills, etc, etc. We all reach there on our first day. It's when the officers are usually very strict and punish us for the small mistakes we might do, such as not helping each other, being too loud, not demonstrating respect, etc. It could earn us 20 push-ups. Our first day was very painful. We did over a hundred push-ups, did drills for hours, and even military-based activities. We had this segment where we cleared rooms with our dummy SAR-21 rifles. Five of us would line up outside this village-style house 
very old, it's about 80 years old, to clear the room by entering it strategically. When we first did this activity, our inchip wasn't so nice with us. When my friend fooled around with the doors, he anyhow pointed the rifle around the house and we got pumped immediately. Inchip said, Sorry two times to the air and shouted at us when we were on the ground. Or the Inchip said, Sorry to the air twice and shouted at us when we were still on the ground doing our push-ups. You think this is a bloody joke, is it? Do you know who you might anger? We dropped 20 and he brought us out of the house to tell us a story. He said that these buildings in the Amokui camp used to be the Japanese officers in the war where a lot of people were killed and several officers had committed suicide. That's why it's a place where we have to respect it. See? Our second night at the camp was pretty routine as well. We all were tired, our bodies were aching, and we just wanted some sleep as we were going to leave the following day. However, there's always a few jokers in a platoon of 300 boys. Five of these jokers went to the parade square at 2 a.m. just to walk around and play games at the haunted house Jap office. They dared each other to stay five minutes in the broken roof of the house to show that they were brave, apparently. One of these idiots accidentally stepped over the offerings that were there, consisting of a candle and biscuits, and didn't bother cleaning up either. They all completed the challenge, and they snuck back into their tents to sleep again. This was when the horrors of the camp started. Not just for them, but for all of us. About 12 of us. We heard people marching. But it wasn't our usual boot sounds. It was softer. These sounds were like those metal boots where they would make a clang sound. The most horrifying moment was when two of those idiots saw shadows of 10 men marching with flat headgear, the type that the Japanese used back then. And they were started crying and shouting, Leave us alone! Please, please, please don't! Constantly, they said it as if like they were being held at gunpoint. We all got scared and we panicked as we couldn't see anything. But we heard it from all around us. The other dorms of boys all rushed to help us as we had seven girls near us who were afraid to do anything. Four of us tried holding those two idiots down but we just couldn't. More boys came and some went to wake the officers up. The inchets quickly rushed to us and carried the boys back to the medical bay where the boys were still screaming for mercy. We could hear it from a hundred meters away. Soon, the screaming stopped. I heard that the, S the inchets used some SAF plug to show in front of the boys to calm them down. Some say they brought them to the buildings to ask for apology after hearing the confession of the other three boys. The boys got extremely reprimanded and were stripped of their rank. The other two boys were sent to the hospital at 3 in the morning where they claimed to see apparitions of soldiers with pitch black eyes from in the glass doors. Mm. Mm. See lah, see lah, offering anyhow step. First of all, okay, why would they allow people with SA-21 rifles to charge into a room that is apparently haunted? Fibua ma? Fibua? All the Fibua? No, but you, but you know the room is haunted, what? Yeah, but you know, in, in that's, you see, you think from the point of view of a government official, huh? yeah. house for training, haunted or not, does not even come into the equation. Oh, it's a good house for training, but it's haunted, sir. Okay, okay, we should not use it because huh, it's haunted. Where got such thing? They will, because, you know what they'll do, right? They'll call the quick dial the the the, the, the spiritual masters come out and clean, huh? But there's no shortage of, of rooms, houses of this sort, right? Right. Why pick the one house with the hantu inside that clearly has hantu because there are already offerings there? You know? Yeah. Sooner yeah. or later, someone's gonna kick the offering. They're yeah. charging into a room, they're playing war games. Correct, correct. They're gonna be cursing and swearing. You know, this is the wrong behavior, asking right? For you're asking for trap. Yeah. yeah, you're asking for mafan that inche, uh. you know? Yeah, I mean, I've been to the Fuba village, for example, right? Mm. The Fuba village last time, I can't remember where. Um, But, I mean, it's it's a whole freaking village. There's lots of houses. Mm. Just seal off that one place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know? You don't need yeah. that one room lah. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, it's just a room. It's just a room, seriously, right? You know, so, uh, and some of these are kids. This is not adult soldiers. You know, the, the this story had a, the possession part, right? Mm-mm. Um, I've seen possessions in my life. Mm. Outside of camp, mainly. But mm. there's one time I saw a possession case in camp. This was a... Slita mm. camp. Ah, okay. Slita camp, huh? Um, you didn't get duty. Now, Slita camp is an old camp and we are old to respect the camp. Now, mm. between the, our fence, we there's a fence that we share between a golf course and us. Mm. And behind the golf course is a tree. I believe it was a Frenchy Penny tree. Okay. Now, uh, oh. the, the cafe at the golf course, the people working there and us mm. are very close friends. Because when it's weekend and you do guard duty, you don't bother cycling down Hyde Park Road towards the another camp to get your food. Nah. You just right. go to the golf course, you pay $5.50, <laughs> you get one of the best chicken cutlet and tia tan. Uh, okay? So that's where we okay. usually go. And like what we spoke about at the start of our Friday Night Live show is mm. people will always look at army boys and first thing they do is, hey, you may have a <laughs> right. So there were ghost stories abound and the golf course people also say, yeah, at night when they were closing the golf course, they can still see people playing or walking in the field. So the people, mm. the, 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 the security guys would take the buggy, go all the way down to where they saw the shadow people. Nothing. Mm. Mm. But where that sighting usually happens is at a big tree near mm. our camp and that fence between the the golf course. Oh, okay. Now, this tree is so big, it has overhanging branch into our our camp. Oh, mm. over, the, over the fence. So, think of our school of logistics building as very old Tudor colonial style two stories only for sure mm-hmm. right and there's actually a basement but because we are on like a slight hill the basement is behind the camp so from mm. the front entrance you go in it's actually first floor you park your mm. car there the parade square and all that there's two mm. stories but mm. to go to the basement you have to take the stairs down where it's behind mm. the camp and that's where okay. the fence is guard duty walk around walk 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 New guy lah. New guy was following me. And then, he said, hey, there's something sitting on the tree. Then I turned to mm. look. Then next thing I do, I saw him, is, he has his hand stretched out. He was, I mm. got into a catatonic, okay. st- catatonic state. He said, siao mm. liao la. Well, I'll drag his body back to the, the, the gut, gut room, put him on the bed. His the eyes mm. all roll back already. Then, Call Sergeant. Mm. Call Sergeant. Sergeant came down. Uh, and said, hey, what happened? What happened? I said, I don't know. He walked past. He said, the tree got something. Then he suddenly go into this state. So he was, he was just, mm. the fingers were all like catatonic. Lah. Like, look, I look at it as, mm. as if the person was having epileptic fits. Right? Mm. So mm. we try to make sure that he's on the side. He doesn't bite his tongue and mm. just keep him alive. So first thing he mm. says, okay, smayang lah, smayang. Smayang. He pray, pray. Call, um, the, the sergeant is a Malay guy pray 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 pray, pray. Mm. I saw this uh, with my naked eye okay? he was quite pale mm. already something like as if it's a mist or a, or a film oh. moved past his face okay. out of his forehead through the roof and oh. then he, he uh, so I said hey, are you okay are you okay drink water drink water he's my young my young let, let the guy drink drink the, ah. the blessed water. Lah. I said, what happened? What happened? Okay. Right? Uh, I said, oh, we're walking there, there. I saw this lady sitting on the tree. So I turned and pointed. Ah. And the minute I pointed at the lady, she flew right ah. towards me, towards my face. Mm. Mm. And all along, I could hear you talking to me, calling out to me. But it was, I was very far away as if I was ejected out of my body, hearing everything in a very echo chamber. She wanted wow. my body. Hmm. But thankfully, it was a very simple possession. The guy came down, pray, mm. and chased it away. Interesting. Uh, so possession, possession case. Mm. Oh, as far as possession case goes, that one is quite probably the mildest that I've seen already. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting to me because uh, we know who sits in trees, right? Mm. You know. Uh, but at the same time, she doesn't possess, le. Oh. Right. Mm. 
you know she it's not her habit it's not her mm. habit and why would she particularly want this boy or you know uh and if she really wanted why did she give up so easily mm. you know so i i i suspect it's not her mm. It's not her. It's someone else who perhaps also sits in trees. You know, uh, we don't know, right? Yeah. Um, definitely of, of, of late, I have suddenly come to realize that every time we see uh, something in white with long hair and we call her uh, Kaka or whatever, right? We are quite probably misrecognizing, you know, a whole range of other spirits who dress alike yeah. and who are probably being frustrated because they are underrepresented. Yeah. So, <laughs> right so uh yeah before we get cancelled we must remember that you know there are many types of hantu all like to wear the same clothes mm. so let's let let's let's be fair so i don't know i don't know what it is yeah but clearly the pointing uh got him in trouble and i think that's what yeah. all people have said even uh when we were in camp uh, mm. the, the sergeants would tell us don't shine your torchlight at trees yeah. So whether yeah. they believe it or they had a counter or because they were just passing down a message that they were mm. that they learned and from their own seniors, mm. that was the message that was passed down. A few yeah. I mean since we are talking about uh this topic, there's mm. a few things you don't do in camp mm. across board. You don't shine torches at trees, you don't mm. pee without permission, uh you never go off alone. Um and you it, don't pee you don't pee under trees or on rocks? On rocks because you may offend the deity. Correct. Trees. And under trees because you offend the spirits. Mm. Yeah, you can pee on flat ground. Mm. Then it's fine. But anything else, you must ask permission. I don't see why they will give you permission to pee on them. So just don't. Uh, mm. Just don't. <laughs> what else? Uh, when you I smell anything, don't uh. acknowledge the smell. Mm. Mm. What's mm. yours? Uh, I love this one. If you're in the jungle and you hear someone calling your name, don't. you must never turn around. Yeah. And how do you know that it's a dangerous one? Because if it's a normal army situation, they will call you only by your surname, mm. right? Like, hey, right? Mm. Or they will call your rank. Mm. But the spirits will use your full name. Don't ever respond. right? And it's really creepy. It's really creepy. And okay. I remember last time in the olden days, uh, my grandmother's mm. period, they were said, ah. you have your three fire mm. on your yep. forehead and your shoulder. So mm. you ne- when, even if you want to turn in, 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 ah. in the forest, you don't mm. just turn your head. Mm. You turn your whole body. Correct. So that you maintain the fire, right? Okay, if you guys want an example of how creepy it is for, to hear someone calling your name, Okay, go and watch the amazing Taiwanese film, The Tag Along, right? The one about the, the little girl in red, okay? Mm. Because they are full, that film is full of uh, Chinese, Chinese ghost law, full mm. of traditions. And they also believe in the same thing, right? That the spirits mm. call your full name. And I, yo, I tell you, it's so creepy when they show it happening, mm. okay? Mm. So please go and catch it. Wow, show, show, show. Even today, whenever I hear someone call my phone, I'm like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. <laughs> okay. Wow, creepy, 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 creepy. Okay, let's see what some of them are saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. We have, we, today, we didn't get a chance to <laughs> go to the comments. Like, oh, Janan Lo is here. Guys, Janan is a commando. Uh, it's also one of the uh, old guards for Supernatural Confessions. Been there wow. since the dawn of time. And he, he, I remember his story was, he... He had an encounter mm. with a ghost and mm. I think in his either his dreamscape portion or something, uh. he grabbed the ghost and lifted the ghost up and cut the uh. ghost. And since then, he never had any <laughs> any haunting anymore. Or <laughs> a fearless on that guy. <laughs> uh, Sean Chen is correct. The ghost world only issues white dresses. Yeah, apparently. That's how it works. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. So, Limbu sits on trees. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, okay, ACDC is pointing out that government cannot officially admit that ghosts exist, right? And this, this is a very interesting point, mm. you know, to talk about because in every other way, they cannot hide it, mm. right? You know, because they have to do the right thing, right? You know, to protect the people involved yeah. as well as to, you know, just to stop the situation from escalating, mm. you know? Mm. So, so um, they all, like, you know, Eugene and I, keep saying right that you know all these government authorities do have do have the spiritual masters on down. Down, you know and in fact 
if you come for the 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 walk with Hantu Changi tour, you mm-hmm. know, even within one neighborhood like Changi, you see so much evidence of this quick dial, okay? Mm-hmm. Because so many of our stories are linked to the fact that somebody somewhere knew who to call just at the right time, <laughs> you know. So oh, yeah. there's a lot of knowledge. Speaking of which, hmm? I should be doing some advertising ah. today. We forgot. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, let's do some advertising. Not, not too late. Not too advertisement late. Not right too late. now, okay? Supernatural Confessions was created as a safe space for people to share their paranormal encounters. If you or someone you know has a strange encounter to share, we want to hear about it. You can type it to us, send us a voice memo, or even meet me for a face-to-face interview. Visit supernaturalconfessions.com for more info. And we have Walk with mm. Hantu Changi going on every Saturday. Uh, Come, we have one next week <laughs> and a week after as well. So if you want to take part uh, in this walk with your Hantu Changi, drop us, drop me a call, 945-94931 mm. or text message. Uh, because Changi is soon to be converted to something modern and all these uh, stories and old buildings yeah. would likely be gone. I think, uh, according to newspaper report, by the end of this year. So, um, yeah. So, it's a limited time offer. Okay, come and grab it and and bring your friends, especially if you have friends who are perhaps uh, who might, might who, who, who think that these things are too scary. I think this tour is nicely balanced. Mm. Okay, it's only as scary as you, your imagination makes it. Yeah. Right, you know. Uh, so, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, we've had many first timers come mm. for this and they survived. Well done, you know. But at the same time, all these, you know, hardcore ghost lovers also have a very mm. short time. So yeah. I feel that it caters to everybody. Yeah. We are not yeah. going into any old buildings to look for ghosts. Uh, but mm. on m- multiple trips, we have participants seeing apparitions in windows and all. So <laughs> maybe you're lucky or unlucky, you might get to experience something on this walk. <laughs> also good for people who are visiting, not, visiting or expats in Singapore if you want to learn about um how deep our belief and our fascination with the supernatural goes. Mm. This tour captures it very nicely because it talks about all the layers of culture and history that come together to form all these Hantu stories that we know today. Mm. So quite quite short, quite short. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Hey, I got, I, what? One of the, there's a story here from Janan, okay? Ah, go read, read please. Okay. Yeah. okay, so I don't know what CRT is, Janan. Please let me know what CRT is. Okay, but this was in Thailand. They were training, okay? And the CRT encountered static the whole night Right, Recky team. In the mid- ah, combat okay. Recky team. Yeah. Combat Recky team encountered static the whole night, and in the middle of a dry riverbed, saw a person in white sitting there and staring at them. Wow. Then uh, another one. He said, uh, "Oh, this is okay. Which which camp is this? Okay, level three company line one lock had lock one locked bunk. Level four of the company line. I saw uh, I one once on weekend duty." for the platoon next to ours, we saw a person sitting next to a recruit. Next day, his back had multiple blue-black. Mm. Oh. Okay, I need to trace back which camp this is. Oh, this is Janan, which camp is this? Is this your commando I think camp? Handen camp. Oh. And then some more, he says, did you hear the one about the woman in red at the commando survival village? Ah. My prowler mate saw it but didn't tell me until after my prowl. <laughs> don't you hate it when friends do that well, you know like... I'd rather you don't tell me when I'm on the spot because what am I going to do <laughs> tell me I'm going to, you're going to scam me now. what am I going to do uh, tell me after that lah. it's okay no worries <laughs> yeah wow. please share please share if you have other stories or little en- en- encounters commando uh, recce team sorry not combat mm. commando hey Jenna, commando nah, recce team can I go and interview you for your confession I think yeah. I think you need to have a spot uh, oh, Achilles <laughs> Aries. Okay, what is it? Oh, I heard that in the past, Tekong and Ubin had temples where deities gave protection. But when government took over, temples were removed and bad things came. Mm. Definitely, definitely for uh, Tekong. Mm. Because um, for those of you who do not know about the past of Tekong, before the army gazetted it, right? it was a very, very fully occupied island. Right, there were multiple villages on it. Right, there was lots of fishing, uh, and long before the villages came, there was also <laughs> Eugene is 
Glee <laughs> that comes up in uh, Changi Tour. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was also a pirate hideout. Mm. Okay. And in fact, when I was there, right, tens of thousands of years ago when I was in DMT, right, the route march, right, the the, the long 24 click route march mm. took us to the other end of the island. And mm. that was apparently where those caves were. Okay, the caves that were used by the pirates. So you have a violent pirate history. Then you have a long, long, long sort of kampong history. And then suddenly the army comes and everything is left ignored. Right? Temples that have been worshipped for decades, ignored. Mm. Shrines, ignored. Right? Sacred sites, ignored. I don't think they exhumed the graves properly. Mm. You know, they probably weren't even marked properly. Right? So it was very hard. So I, I don't know how much was left behind on the island. And I think that's what Tekong is dealing with. So uh, I am dealing with leftovers, you know? Eothian is asking, can they send all the religious mm. heads to bless Tekong? Uh, Eothian, to answer that question, mm. religious heads have been invited to Tekong on multiple occasions. And one of those occasions, I was there. Uh, I was one of the mm. volunteers to assist the Taoist master to bless. So there have been efforts by the military to bless the place. But I think... But I think you can't bless a whole island. Yeah. You know, you can bless one spot because you need to have a camp on it. Mm. So you try your best. But also, I believe that whenever you're trying to bless, right, there's there's not as much power in that as you think. Because mm. ultimately, it's not about good and bad and you know who's right and who's wrong. Those spirits were there before you. Yeah. They have far more right to haunt this land then you have to come and take their land mm. for your for your new purpose, right? They should be the ones getting all spirits, all masters to chase you away, <laughs> you know, yeah. ironically, right? So we who want to exorcise are actually the usually the ones least deserving, mm. you know? So when we don't succeed, don't be surprised. Some things you cannot chase, uh, you cannot chase, yeah. right? A place like Tekong, for sure, I think cannot chase, uh. Mm. Well, speaking about Tekong again, I think there's a uh. one more story. Uh, this one is yeah. from uh, a skeptic. <laughs> from a skeptic, okay? Uh, is, that, is that his nickname or is that no, his description his, of himself? His name is Chester. Okay. I believe we have talked about this confession before um, mm. in one of the second generation confession. But uh, I felt okay. that this is a very powerful story and John, with your insight, I think we can mm. look at this confession in different ways that we have not mm. explored before. So, this one is titled okay. A Hair Raising Experience, Confession by Chester. Mm. Hello, Eugene. I've been a big fan since SC early days. Never been on any SC live, but I have listened to all of the Spotify podcasts multiple times. I was re listening to podcast 119 where there was a confession about an experience that took place on Tekong. Somehow that reminded me of a paranormal experience I personally had about 10 years ago. I must have subconsciously buried the memory in the deep recesses of my mind, but listening to that confession unlocked it somehow. First off, I'm actually a super skeptical person and have always been from the chem rational. I can assure you that I will be the first to die in horror movies as I will always go to check out any weird occurrences that I encounter just to assure myself. I also admit that there have been some confessions I've heard on the podcast that I have well, mentally bashed in my head but have kept my silence out of respect. That form of respect is definitely much more prevalent now with this old memory being fresh in my mind again. I've never had any paranormal encounters, thankfully, which is why I would say I had a paranormal experience instead. That said, I actually had the chance to possess physical evidence, but did not think to keep it or anything. I may be skeptical, but I'm Asian, and there are superstitions that we abide by. Maybe I would have kept it if XC had existed back then. Anyway, let me elaborate further with my story. This happened to me when I was serving national service about 10 years ago. I was a recruit undergoing basic military training, also known as BMT, at the ever so famous Pulau Tekong. I can't remember which school I was at, but my company building was near the swimming complex and also relatively near the cookhouse. Anyway, I recall my bunk being on the third floor of the building. It was also the closest to the toilet. I shared a bunk bed 
with my buddy next to the window, the kind that had window panes facing the long corridor. And I took the bottom bed. Not sure if this happened for everyone, but when you need to get up in the middle of the night to pee, most people, if not everyone, would wake their buddies up to go together. It was kind of an understood thing. But being the rational sort and a super nice guy, I would usually go on my own with the I don't give a fuck mentality. I think it was also because I drink lots of water at night on a regular basis, so I felt bad if I had to wake my buddy up all the time. So here's how I think. I've always felt that the fear of the paranormal has always been all about the mindset. Like if you keep feeling afraid that there are things around, you will definitely feel spooked about every little thing that you hear or see. So, so long as you have a super chill mentality, not think about it, you will be fine. At least that was how it worked for me. But be that as it may, I do sometimes get the feeling that I have fear for no reason. But I would just amount, but I would just amount to me being re- irrational and not thinking straight. I would calm myself down by checking my surroundings, which would then be followed by me not seeing or hearing anything abnormal. However, there was this one time that was still relatively near the beginning of my BMT. I can't remember what time it was exactly, but I got a feeling to pee just like any other time. Before I continue, let me give you a brief description of the layout of the toilet. When you first enter the toilet, you see a couple of basins and mirrors on the wall. Turn right and you see a row of urinals facing the direction of the basins and the mirror. Another wall separating the urinals and cubicles and a gap in between these two walls to go to the cubicles. I would typically go to the far end of the toilet, walking past the gap between the two walls to pee as my rational mind was telling me that I would at least have my left side covered with a wall and I would only need to check my right side if I hear or feel anything strange while peeing. I know it's hard to imagine, but if I turn to look behind, I'll be looking straight at the second wall with the cubicles behind it. So there I was peeing midstream, feeling nothing out of the ordinary, no feeling of fear whatsoever. And I suddenly heard something drop and made a loud thud. It felt quite near to me, but it came from one of the cubicles directly behind me. I couldn't see anything because of the wall. I remember chills going down my spine at that point in, and in my head I was going, shit, 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 faster pee, faster pee. It felt like forever. But when I was finally done and keeping my pecker, I decided to let out a firm, hello? Someone there? But didn't get any response. I wasn't sure what to make of that. So me being me, I decided to take a quick look. So I crept to the corner of the gap of the wall and took a quick peek. I saw a rather large bottle of soap. Not those travel pack kind, huh? Those large bottles lying on its side outside one of the cubicles situated near the far end. Immediately I went, nope, and got the hell out of there. I know it's normal for us to leave soap bottles in the cubicles and that sometimes they may move because of residual soap being on whatever surface that they're sitting on. But the sound I heard was relatively loud. And how the hell did the bottle get all that momentum to end up outside the cubicle? I only heard one sound, like when you release something from your hand and it drops straight on the floor. And not multiple sounds, like as if the bottle travelled some distance and roll or tumble around. It was... I washed my hands really quickly by just jabbing down on the tap button and putting my hands through the running water once and got the hell out of there. I walked briskly to my bunk, laid down on my bed, plugged in my earphones, blasting trance music, and just planted my eyes on the window. First, I figured if something was going to appear, I would be around people and I wouldn't be cornered by myself. Not like how I was in the toilet. I was half expecting something or someone to appear in the window. I didn't see anything for God knows how long. And eventually, I fell asleep. That's not the end of the story. 
So I re- remember, we would usually wake up quite early in the morning while it was still dark. The ones that got up earlier wouldn't switch on the lights till the very last minute as it was quite annoying to those who were still sleeping. I woke up a little bit later than usual as I was quite tired from that ordeal. I had to rush to get ready so to not get my butt plucked by my commanders. So I hurriedly put on my uniform and got ready. I remember the lights being switched on as I stepped out to go to the toilet. I went to the toilet with no incident, not even thinking about what happened last night as I was more annoyed with the fact that I had no time to brush my teeth. I rushed down to fall in. We went on with our training and that was that. When we were finally done with the morning training and got back to our bunks, ready for a breather before lunch, that was when I saw it. Lying on my unmade bed were a few strands of long black hair. Then Mark I held them to my face, inspecting them curiously. I was initially quite chill about it, thinking that it must have been someone like a female superior from HQ or something, or even a cleaner that came to our bunks while we were out training. But a split second later, it then occurred to me, hey, the fuck? There are no cleaners here. We are expected to clean our own shit ourselves. The only female company in the school is quite a distance away from the ferry terminal. There are no female superiors in my company. And we are all bota! Even if it was a female superior, was it such a coincidence that a few strands of hair were fallen right on my bed and not anywhere else? I even took the broom in the bunk to compare. And it was definitely not from there. I showed my buddy the hair and he just went, what the fuck? I could tell he wasn't too excited about it, so I threw it back. I threw it away in a black trash bag. I didn't want to scare any of my other bunkmates, so I didn't say anything about it. And I was sure someone would have said something first if they had found hair on their beds. And since that incident, I would still get these strands of hair appear on my bed occasionally. Only in Tengkong, nowhere else. But as our training got progressively tougher with time passed, so did my tolerance for the paranormal. As we would be dead tired at the end of every single day. I remember I'd be, I'd be too tired to pay any heat to the strands of hair and would just clear it like it was rubbish. I also still went to the toilet by myself. I did not hear any weird sounds anymore or perhaps I was too tired to give a damn. I didn't mention this to anyone else, even during the weekends when I booked out because I didn't want to have this experience effect on me at all. And I believe I had better things to do back then than to worry about things that don't exist. But now, years later, with this memory resurfacing, I cringe at the possibility of something or someone overlooking me while I slept all those nights during BMT. I typed this account with tears welling up in my eyes as perhaps I was too young back then to comprehend what I was dealing with. However, I wonder why I wasn't directly affected by what it was. I can only attribute it to the fact that my room, oh sorry, I can only attribute it to the fact that my mom is a stoic Buddhist with my house being home to multiple Buddha statues. I remember I was also given some sort of Buddha charm. So as rational and unsuperstitious as I tend to be, I would like to think that Buddha was protecting me and that thing or person or that thing or person couldn't harm me. Perhaps pulling their hair out of frustration, but not going away without at least leaving a message to ensure I acknowledge his presence. I swear, I would have kept the hairs if SC had existed back then. But then again, that's not really a good idea, right? The rest of my time in NS went on without incident, so this was the only time. I know I did not actually see anything, but I was 100% sure I held those strands of hair in my hands on multiple occasions all those years ago. Was I so afraid of the fact that the paranormal could possibly exist that I just remained in denial all this time? Even till today? Hmm. Okay, I've already solved it. I solved it already. <laughs> wow, wow. I know what happened. So clearly, there was this succubus type spirit, okay, you know, who's hanging around looking for, you know, like virile young men, okay, and, 
you know, catch it, waits for them when they come to the toilet alone, right? Mm. If they bring a buddy, cannot lah, right? Because you know, not 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 really in the mood for a threesome, right? So just waiting for single guys to come, right? And then she dropped the soap, such a clear hint, right? It's like tong, and then come on, come on, pick it up, pick it up, and then he didn't, right? So frustrated, right? So she just left hints, left hints, left hints, and he still ignore, mm. right? So if she, I think if it had gone on and if it had remained in Tekong, the long black hairs will soon have become short and curly hairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. this is obviously a sexy haunting that did not happen. Okay, you think so? I, yeah, okay, what do you I, think? I, okay, so I, I, li- I like your what version you better, John. <laughs> I like the succubus <laughs> idea better. Now the long hair thing has been a repeated reoccurrence for many mm. confession. Yes, Mark Shippo just said that his 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 bum mate got uh, long black hairs on his bed for no reason. Mm. Also. So mm. this long black hair phenomenon mm. is not just an urban legend because uh, hearing from Chester's confession, is mm. it Chester? Is it Chester? Chester? Chester, right? Yeah. Chester's yeah. confession, uh, the ones I spoke to and Mark Shippo, mm. it seems to be something that's a phenomenon that is happening more often and people is willing to admit but yet at the same mm. time no one has a logical reasonable explanation for this mm. if it's long curly hair maybe lah you know might be someone <laughs> puke lah but long straight hair like mm. no cleaner no females and this is BMT by the way there's no cleaner for you there's no female mm. officers going to come and inspect your your bunk so where does uh, it come from? the, the old granny uh, the old granny old granny <laughs> possible <laughs> Yeah, but okay, lah. The hair is very black for an old granny, mm. so you know. But what I like what, it is what, what, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? I think if it's, I, if it's not a sexy ghost. <laughs> I like the idea of a sexy ghost, lah. So I'm stuck with that now, you know, in my head. But because what, there's there is the idea that she chose him, right? Mm, mm, it correct. seems it seems no one else got it, right? So if you know, yeah, wh- wh- why why would she choose you? Okay, what so, does she want? So a few things. Okay, let's break it down a bit. A few mm. things that would not be possible. Right? One, mm. if you put your shampoo in the toilet, like what Chester mm. said, if there's mm. soap, residual soap, it slides off, it will just fall in, mm. in the shower cubicle. Yeah. Don't fly out of the cubicle and land. And even if it had dropped from a height and tumble, it will be ketuk, 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 ketuk out of it. So from a science angle and a rational angle, Mm. it's almost like that bottle flew out of the cubicle and dropped. Mm. Uh, something standing over him. That's what he imagined. He imagined. Yeah. And because he had planted that in my head, I can now mm. imagine like the Jew on where the... <laughs> and then when he sleeps, this long uh. hair lady just stands over him, try to get his attention, but cannot. <laughs> Okay, that would lead to something much creepier, which is you will wake up and the long black hair will be on you, which is mm. way creepier, right? But this is obviously someone who came and stood there while he's not in bed. Yeah. <laughs> because the yes. long black hair is there, like right there in the middle of the bed, yeah. right? You know, was it on the pillow? Because if it's on the pillow, then that thing is sleeping on your pillow, which Ooh. is way creepier. Right? But if it's in the middle of the bed, then I get the sense that it's placed there almost, you know, sort of in- very intentionally, right? Like, make sure you don't miss this. You know? You go back, smell your pillow, like, if it's chow chow or it's... Hey, wow. Wow, it smells like flower. <laughs> ah, then you know something wrong already. <laughs> what do you guys think? All right? Where do the hairs come from? And what is the intention of leaving them? Is there a signal being sent to him? And what could he have done about it? I mean, it is a shame that he threw them away because in your... In the Hantu Museum... Yeah. That, that Eugene is trying to create. Can you imagine a whole room devoted to just strands of black hair? <laughs> hey, so any, any of the boys out there, uh, you are all in army right now, you cannot the the, uh, the long black hair thing. Please keep it uh, in plastic. Please keep, yeah. please keep. Yeah, please keep in a ziplock bag, okay? Don't contaminate, mm. all right? Because uh, as someone's, I think uh, it was Juju Bay who suggested to go and DNA the hair, okay? Mm. Can you imagine if all this hair collected over the decades all came from the same person? Oh, same DNA, same DNA. Okay, across all the freaking camps for the last don't know how many decades. Okay, everybody, oh. start keeping hairs already from 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 Tekong. Okay, 
Okay. <laughs> okay, because the museum needs all these things. Yes. Okay, proof, proof. So, okay, okay. Like, we have come to the end. <laughs> we mid- midnight, we will cross over to 1st July, then we will happy SAF day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell them about the feature confession. Okay, so this feature confession is by this guy called Daniel. And mm. uh, I had a, a wonderful time interviewing him. He was very detailed in his interview. And he had multiple um, experiences. I decided mm. to just, you know, feature uh, just one of these, this, uh, two, uh, two, mm. two locations. One was in Takong and the mm. other one was in Salarang Camp. Ah. Uh, so he's a very engaging storyteller. Listen to him. I'm actually meeting up with him again to get other confessions non-SAF related. And he actually shared mm. one with me. And uh, this one was full on with possession, <laughs> with people breaking down, mass hysteria. And because he was a camp leader, uh, mm. he just had to keep a front. Uh, this particular story that he told us, told, uh, that you'll be looking at tonight at 12 midnight, yep. mm. if you allow your imagination to run wild along with the story, <laughs> it can get kind of funky. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy this one. It's called Pontianak yeah. in Tekong and Haunted Army Stories. Wow, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Okay, Imagine Malayans wants to tell you, Eugene, the story I couldn't get to share is related to this story. And it happened around the same time. Probably the same goes with the same modus operandi. I mm, assume you're talking about the, the, hair, the, the black hair. hair yes. The black hair. Mm. Ah. So yeah, definitely, I think some people need to start collecting the hair so that we can find out, we can investigate, right? Uh, <laughs> I like the idea of CSI Hantu. <laughs> okay, we apply all all the forensic science. Mm. Okay, on trying to figure out what's yeah. going on. Next time you see a hantu, just go and pluck the hair, lah. Just pluck. So now, if you guys <laughs> are, you run. if you guys are interested in more of these confessions, because obviously, uh, you know what we have on our YouTube is uh, mm. edited, curated for pretty really poignant and specific to a theme. Now, mm. what I do have are some B rolls, uh, uh, interviews Ooh. with the confessors. That I think the majority of the people who are not SE fans who are just there for a quick hantu fix may not be interested to listen. But I have those for patrons. So if you're a patron, mm. uh, you have additional bonus content. You get to know the confessor a bit better. Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're just added uh, content that gives a bit more depth to the understanding <laughs> of uh, the confessor. So uh, once again, if you are interested in being a patron, I have an advertisement for you. Thank you for listening to the Supernatural Confessions podcast. If you are enjoying the show and would like to support our efforts, you can help by giving us a 5-star review or by becoming a patron by signing up for a monthly membership fee that starts from as low as $5. Check out the perks at patreon.com slash supernatural confessions. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash supernatural confessions. Or if you feel like showing a simple gesture of appreciation, you can buy us a cup of coffee or two at buymeacoffee.com slash superconfess. And now, right, and with that, we come to the end of our show today. It's a two-hour special. (laughs) It was insane, okay? I I remember when we first decided, okay, it's going to be about uh, army stories. I said, okay, you have to push back the featured confession. It will take all night. And still, you won't get, you won't come anywhere close to finishing all the stories. So I say we should have another sequel. Mm. Okay. Soon. So okay. not immediately, yeah. not immediately, yeah. okay. But please spend the time collecting as many as you can, okay. Please send in your confessions, all right, that are related to army, so that you, maybe you can be in our sequel. Mm. Wow. And then I, okay, I will share a bit more of my beach road cat. Okay? <laughs> okay. So how? What's the what's the result of the poll? Result Did- of the poll, uh, Sounds like you beach road cat, beach road cat is the most haunted. <laughs> Keras, you know. Keras, keras. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, tell me right now. Uh, for all those of you who are in the force, thank you very much for your service. Uh, mm. All the NSF. Okay, hopefully we managed to entertain you today and, and frighten mm. the bejesus out of you in your next few. Yeah, camp. don't be scared of NS lah. Don't be scared. Yeah, because scared the ghosts are scarier. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, any last words, John, before we say goodbye? Wow. I think that the only thing scarier than a ghost in the army. It's an army with no ghosts. Well, <laughs> don't believe everything you heard from uh, ghost stories in army camp, but also know that some of these stories are not without some form of origin and basis. So mm. keep an open mind. 
Good night. My name is Eugene Tay. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Lim. I'll see you guys next week. Good night, Happy everyone. Happy day. Yes. Go to our feature confession tonight, Pontiana in Tekong, on our YouTube channel. Ooh. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.